Hey guys, Tristan from the CPAPstore.ca here. Today we're gonna to be looking at CPAP versus APAP and see which one is the better one for you. Now, in my opinion, I think CPAP, once you get it dialed in, is the better option. And we're gonna talk about why that is and the kind of the problems that we see with APAP. Now, before I begin, I just wanna say that the ResMed F40 CPAP mask, one of the newest masks from ResMed, is now available at the CPAPstore.ca. That's right, it is launched in Canada. So get it while you can and subscribe to this YouTube channel if it's helpful. So now if you're watching this video, you might have just jumped into the CPAP world and your doctor may have given you a machine that's capable of CPAP and APAP. Lots of times we use the word CPAP for the umbrella term, but we're often talking about any pressure device like CPAP, APAP, or BiPAP. Anyways, your machine like an AirSense 11 or AirSense 10 is often able to use APAP or CPAP. The difference is CPAP is a continuous pressure whereas APAP is an automatic pressure. Now, oftentimes doctors may give you a machine, but they're not an actual sleep therapist. Maybe they have the ability to pre prescribe a machine, but they actually don't know kind of the ins and outs of CPAP therapy. And oftentimes they will give you just whatever pressure that they think is good enough. And oftentimes it'll be an APAP pressure of four to 20, meaning they're gonna just give you the full range of what the machine can offer and let the machine figure it out itself. Now in almost all cases, this is a bad idea because the machine is gonna be just ramping up as much as it can from four, five, six, seven, all the way to 20 until it tries to figure out an area that you are gonna be having the least apneas. And this doesn't work because the machines aren't perfect. Actually, they are quite far from perfect. And just having a machine like this try to guess a range for you doesn't really help that much. So oftentimes you'll get that data, that beginning data, and that'll give your doctor a somewhat decent range to give you APAP for a certain settings. For example, like a nine pressure to a 15 or something like that. And oftentimes people just take this pressure from the doctor after their first week or their first initial sleep test, and they're just gonna run with that APAP pressure forever and ever. Now, APAP does have some problems which are worth talking about, which is what I wanna address now. Oftentimes, you will get, or you will start to notice that you have an optimal pressure. An optimal pressure being the one pressure that's comfortable enough for you and also gets your AHI down to a reasonable level of below five, AKA, it's enough pressure to help with your sleep apnea. And what people will do is they will take this pressure, let's say it's 10, and they will have a little buffer at the top and a little buffer down below. So say your pressure is 10, they might put, let's do an APAP range of seven to 13. Now, the reason why this is a problem is because when your machine is on APAP, it's trying to use the lowest pressure it can to give you the most comfort because typically lower pressures are more comfortable. So it's gonna start at that pressure of seven. And if it thinks you need it, it's gonna give you the pressure of 10 because with every apnea, it's gonna crank up the pressure a little bit more. But with the APAP, it's always trying to decrease the pressure. Okay, that's like its main thing. It'll give you higher pressure if it thinks you need it, but after 15 minutes or whatever, it's gonna slowly start trickling back down to that lower end of the spectrum. Meaning that if your pressure that you've calculated is the most optimum at 10 and you have the least apneas at a pressure of 10 and you have an APAP pressure of seven to 13, your device is gonna be giving you 10 when it thinks you need it, but more often than not, trying to get back down to seven. And since the machine is doing this, it's kind of giving you a pressure of seven, eight, and nine, typically for a majority of the night, which is often not enough for you because we've already determined your pressure is best when it's a 10. So if you know your pressure is best at a 10, why not just have the pressure at 10? Why give it a buffer room on each side, which are like suboptimal areas, and your machine's just trying to guess throughout the night on where it should be, okay? The second reason why that APAP can be a problem is because APAPs, or APAP machines or CPAP machines have flaws. They, they are riddled with flaws in their algorithm and they don't always pick up apneas. They're very good at picking up big apneas or figuring out when you're awake and maybe cranking the volume of air one or two points when it figures out you have a lot of apneas, but really subtle apneas or flow changes that are just subtle enough that are kind of leading up to bigger apneas, the machine is often not going to pick up. And because of that, by the time you get to those bigger apneas, which the machine does pick up and does crank the volume pressure to 
mitigate those apneas, it's already too late and you've already woken up. And therefore, because the APAP machine isn't perfect and doesn't pick up on those subtle apneas and can't change the pressure accordingly, oftentimes people are waking up before the pressure changes to uh, optimal amount. Even when the pressure does increase to an optimal amount for them and those apneas dissipate, the machine, again, like I said before, st slowly trickles its way back down to get to those lower pressures, in which case you start the cycle all over again. Now, the last thing with APAPs is naturally, by their very nature, they fluctuate in pressure. They change pressure throughout the night to give you low, more comfortable pressure and then higher pressure when you need it. But that fluctuation is actually kind of hard on the body. And for some people, that fluctuation actually disturbs their breathing rhythm and they, they're just waking up because pressure is changing. So if you're using a CPAP and it's just a continuous pressure, your body knows I'm getting this pressure, I'm getting a 10 pressure, it's enough to open my airway, and then your body kind of takes care of the rest. It breathes, it knows exactly what the air pressure it's getting, and it uses that throughout the night. Whereas for APAP, it might get comfortable with your seven pressure, you move, you move your neck or something like that, now you're getting more apneas, your machine jumps higher to get a higher pressure. Now your body's like, wait, what? I'm getting a higher pressure and I'm also uh, sitting in a more uncomfortable way and like things are changing. And that in the very nature itself actually wakes you up because there's just more fluctuations going on. So what do I recommend? Well, I recommend looking at your CPAP data with your doctor or looking at Oscar and just learning how to read that data and try to figure out which pressure actually for you is the most optimal. In that case, try to use that pressure in a CPAP mode and see if that pressure allows you to have a better sleep. Another thing you can do is change your EPR setting. So EPR is your expiratory pressure relief. It decreases the pressure with every exhale, similar to a BiPAP. So if your pressure is a 10 on CPAP and you have a two on your uh, EPR, then your exhale pressure is gonna be at eight because 10 minus two equals eight. And that's gonna fluctuate the pressures. Like I said, is not always the best thing. Some people find it annoying and they'll wake up. But for other people, it'll be more comfortable and therefore you can have the higher pressure that's more optimal for you while having a little bit of comfort that the EPR is providing without needing to have this range from like seven to 15 or seven to 13, like I mentioned, and you're actually not getting the optimal pressure because the APAP machine is always trying to give you the lowest pressure possible, right? With the EPR, however, if you do wanna use it and you find that it's comfortable, you might have to change your pressure settings. So for example, if you're at a pressure of 10 and you wanna use an EPR three, and that's the most comfortable for you, you might actually have to bump up your pressure to 11 or 12 to make sure you're still having the same effective sleep apnea therapy. And the last thing I wanna talk about is APAP. If you are gonna use APAP, at least try to figure out what your optimal pressure is and then have a smaller increment. A lot of people get into the habit or they're just told by their doctor like, oh, just put in APAP and the machine will figure it out and it'll be like four to 20 and the machine's changing like crazy and, and it's just not fun for anyone. So if you do wanna still use APAP, try to find your optimal pressure, say your pressure is a 10 and at most maybe do nine at your low pressure and then a little bit higher, so like nine to 12. But you don't wanna go a lot lower than your optimum pressure just to have more comfort because chances are the machine's gonna be giving you a lower pressure most of the night and you're not going to have effective therapy. So that wraps up the video. I hope it makes sense. Please subscribe or like the video and have a good sleep. Take care guys.